They will exploit you. Yeah, let's see it then. Uh, is Captain Mo going to be able to drive the forces through Namiga or will it be a nice comfortable day in the office for Namiga as they start on the CT side immediately out the gate still helmet they want to head towards A it's going to be a quick execute off the bat there's only one flashbang to get them forward but they've got a molly here he's going forward and he meets his death Flamin steps in for one but DD with the bullets through the head Khan what a tap keeps it equal he's going to fall back with DD a double up from him has given space for the bomb plant. It's fought. It's a difficult retake. Dual Paredes in a USP. There was no kit. They just have to find the kills. And this angle. Ralsagi is powerful. Zanta with these dual Paredes, even downgrading to the USP for the long range engagement. Still helmet. They're looking to get this pistol with a fury. In a second. It feels there like it they is. will. <laughs> yeah. Just about. <laughs> Jasage locking it in. What a round out, out of them as well. It's very simple. Straight out of the gate, you see uh, Attacker is coaching this lineup as well. A lot of old guard from Tai Lu. And they made waves in the European region for their Mirage. And it was quite famously coating the A bomb site completely in smokes and just creating uh, absolute pandemonium on that bomb site. This one's a lot more simple, but it's DD. That's the player you've really got to keep an eye on because he was the player that was pushing, taking all of the space and not allowing Namiga a chance to fight their way back onto the bomb site. It was a really difficult retake for them. And as soon as the bomb was down it felt like they were shut out and you know for, for <laughs> i don't want to say but for jasagi you know he only got one kill in that opening game he just got three in the first round so you know immediately he's bouncing back you're living good this one shouldn't be too much of a dilemma they're heading b no one's home namiga they stacked but they've guessed incorrectly. So the bomb can go down. Oh, the only, the only guess, a little danger in this round is just making sure that Zhao Sage doesn't drop his AK towards the back of mid, but that's why 18YM, or as Alex affectionately referred him to as 18-year-old male, has stepped in at short. And Captain Mo is finding freebies and farming cash. A lot of money being collected. A very good round indeed for Steel Helmet. Yeah, that cast was... That was an interesting one. That was, that was, that was After something. Effects as well for A. We'll do our best to keep it serious. We're in Elimination Games and it is serious. As you see, Mr. 18YM. Who is nowhere near 18. No, he's 29. 29-year-old, <laughs> 18-year-old male. And execute straight out the gate onto A by the SLHT boys. Flamers with the flames, ready to drop a can. Decides, can keep the gun out. Oh no, indecision. And it's when DD strikes, the flames go forward. He is on fire. DD with the opening kill. Risky Bob still sitting at the back. Not cleared yet. He might have an opportunity to strike. Maybe catch a kill in the back lines, but that smoke's giving coverage. He spotted heads, found the first kill. Now he's known. That's given space for Leah to come over the top. Risky Bob gets a second. And it's a tricky post plant. Both the T's stuck. And they know exactly where they are. Jao Sage looking for this fight on the Risky Bob. He smokes himself off. Oh, the bomb's not even down. So that makes it even harder to post plant. Although, that's a kill. Second not allowed. DD who opened up the round. Now has to close it. Oh, yeah, has to walk through that smoke and can't find can't. Very close. Again, like the idea from Steel Helmet. Very execute heavy. And it nearly worked. You see the Flamus is caught off guard with the pacing because Steel Helmet go ahead of the utility, but Risky Bob completely overlooked and the smoke drops actually really helped him out. And from there they can just recycle them. Shao Sargo feels under pressure, but more importantly, he's just trapped in the corner. Can't get involved in the round, and from there... It's just all left up to DD. So Namiga find one back instantly. Of course, still Helmet are going to reply with an investment. Limited utility, but got, they've got all the AKs in play at the very least. Captain Mo going to be helped out. 
by 18YM, but he's been spotted. Oh. Lear really wanted to give it a go. And in fact, Didi's helped him finish the job. There was no one else even there. That was just the flash and just the pre-fire spam, thinking that someone is peeking. But no one was even peeking. So that's a flashbang that gets a kill for free. Unlucky. The spam damage, Leah. Over the top of the smoke, can't convert the kill onto AE. Khan spots Captain Mo trying to sneak through smokes. DT's still sticking around. They will be looking to split onto A. One place, one player in Palace. One coming up the ramp with the bomb. DT trying to catch this timing and he might find it. Oh, might find it. There it is. Flavis back turned, not ready for DD to have crossed through that smoke. Their HP on the other two players. So this round really relies on DD. Helping them control this space. Even getting the bomb down is going to be tricky. If AE goes for the plant, there's a chance Risky Bob could just spam. No crossfire available from heaven. And yeah, Risky Bob's just going to walk into the side. DD does get that trade. He's doing everything for them right now. Khan, a second player, out from the ticket. And DD, that was never going to be a plant. Yeah, well played there from Namiga. Just waited so patiently to get into a position where they could unsettle still helmet on that bomb site. Notice the timing of Risky Bob when he decides to push through CT. That's all because Khan's there and can back him up. They can go for these hero plays and the delay on the timing makes still helmet doubt that there's another player there. Not ready for him whatsoever. I thought the Palace player was going to maybe lurk out a little bit more, especially with the timing that DD had found over towards Connector. But where it was a little bit static, it gave Namiga the room just to walk back forward. Tech Nine's in play. This time it's not the A bomb site that's the final destination. It's going to be B. They're going to be going up against the whole house of Namiga where it comes to the utility and the weaponry, and they think better of it. They see one smoke, one incendiary, and they relocate. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind them just hitting B bomb site, even though you see that initial util. Just to kind of test the defense, right? Get a feel for how it's holding. See if you can break through. You're definitely going to be deterred now that Xanta is living in the apartments. He's evicted. A few shots. Into mid, Leah gets info on two. That's going to call over some additional support. Captain Murray swinging with the bomb. Puts that straight into the firing line of Leah. He has Flamis by his side. And they're not really having too many issues against these upgraded pistols. Yeah, you can, you can kind of see the ideas of slotting into place for steel helmet, but the, the execution is just slightly off. For example, there, there's three players in connector that are ready to swing on the angle, but the, the timing is a little bit uncoordinated to the point where Captain Mo goes on his own with the bomb, and from there, everyone can swing together. In fact, it's just needed Lear, but you've got players on short. You see Flamus gets the kill in the feed immediately. But from that kill and connector, uh, still Hammett can still take it anywhere, especially with the B apartments presence. They could have split up through short. There, there's a world of opportunity. Attacker takes time out. He wants 30 seconds to think about things because this starts off really well for Steel Helmet, but now Namiga are gathering momentum. They're able to get three rounds in a row, and the money is not in the best place for the likes of Jasaga and Captain Mo. Yeah, they really do just have to cop it again with the pistols. GD gets the hero Galil. But again, I kind of wouldn't mind just hitting B. Yeah, I agree. Just, just, or even just go for something execute yeah. based, right? That's been the most success story so far for Steel Helmet. It's the moment you're letting the Mega get into a mid round. That's where things are falling apart. And you can afford to do it on rounds like this, as you said, because the the money's not in the best state of affairs. You haven't got the most amount of utility, but you are limit testing. Yeah, that's the key thing. That's it. Without the util, they can hunt with the deagles. Maybe there's a chance, you know, you find one. Cause Namiga to get flustered. Set up this Galil for success, which is currently lurking in the B apartments. It feels like a place where he's not going to find too many opportunities. Maybe on smoke fade, he will. Meanwhile, Flamis is going to go do his own little bit of a hunt. Oh, okay, hold up. Jasage, he's found the double. Leah 
in jungle gets one back but not ready baiting my am no no oh dear that was a freebie at least there's a recovery with the ak and dd walks into b so they can get that bomb over to that side of the map but it gets a little dicier than it should have been it's still on oh xanta oh was aware dd gets a dink but not the kill from Zanza, so that's fine. Because now, still Helmet can plant B. Khan will definitely give this a look in. He knows that DD is 1 HP. So if he's able to find the bomb planter, this retake is definitely possible. Waiting. Xiao Sage hasn't moved a muscle from his position on default. As DD scouts and looks for intel, they're both low. Khan senses the potential for a clutch, but it's not to be. And despite 18YM with a little bit of a blunder over towards the connector, it doesn't matter. Still Helmet is still able to recoup the round. Yeah, thank, thank the lucky stars that Jao Sage is able to get that kill. You see this double up with the Tech 9 just pushing the issue. And you think you're favored. You've already found that first kill. Jao Sage's low flamets just cannot connect. And we'll see this back. Leah, the missed shot, two missed shots with the Deagle. Oh. You know, sometimes it's hard to hit a player in the back of the head, but normally that's when there's, like, distance between you. But listen, everyone whiffs yeah. one. Just like, they're not whiffing. Nine for three. But a huge recovery from yesterday. He's playing exceptionally. Here's why Namiga have been smoking Palace off nearly every single round, by the way. You can tell that prep work has been put to good effect because this is the round that Steel Helmet wanted to potentially explode out Palace. And now they have to wait patiently. 18YM has got the whole gang with him and Lear worried about the potential fact that that flashbang is good, but it still doesn't affect AE. He finds the opener, but Flamus under Palace does all of the damage. And that should be more than enough to lock in this round. DD left with a sliver, bombarded out of the bomb site. Namiga are just able to hold strong all of the back yeah, of Flamis. Yeah, great hold from Flamis. Gets that first kill and even the second. The dingle into the third player is just salt in the wound. There was a rotation far to see. He's going to get that second dink on DD as he falls. And that just allows the HE to come over to close the round. Look decent for a second for Steel Helmet when they managed to get the first kill onto Leah. I think maybe one Molotov would have flustered Flamis and given some space. Instead, a flash from Flamis sets up Leah. An opening kill. DD not known to be that close. But again, Amiga, always with the extra player ready to swing. The Deagle does damage a second flashbang to set up Flamis, but doesn't quite convert his second kill. Two on two. It is doable as AE picks up the AK. One HP on Zhao Sage. Definitely complicates matters. Issues the bomb. That, that's the first step for Steel Helmet. They also have to be aware that Namiga could have pushed anywhere. They could have walked through the B apartment, which is why AE is walking up under, just to make sure that that error is definitely clear. Chiasage has got no information about ramp as well, but they will collect the bomb, and where AE is taking this space, they can now reset. And by being very silent about this, Santa has got no idea that these two players lie in wait. Yeah, and with his position, you feel the bomb should go down unless Santa starts to move. But instead, he has a poke into middle. If he falls back and holds the apartment line, that's where it becomes difficult for Steel Helmet to break through into the Shasaki on one HP. He's finished off. And it's all on to a just committing the plant. No, decides to get off at the last second. Good call, the flames came forward, but he can't find that first kill. Notice that both players are. Time and issue, even the reload. But not quite sure where Jalasake has gotten to, and Khan held the line with the AWP. Five for Namiga. Namira are playing very confident, especially in the early stages of these rounds. See that Leo obviously goes for a flash play, which is set up by Flamus, then he just hangs around. Feels like he's got the support from Flamus, and then even here, another swing. Yes, supported by a flashbang. But these are very individual gunfights. You can see the way that Steel Helmet, they've got the numbers there just to be able to trade, and that's what makes it a two versus two in the first place. Some really nice shots coming out of the Deagle. Of course, it's Xiao Sage that is still delivering knocks to Namiga. 
But a good close right at the very end. Another breather for Steel Helmet. They are making these rounds very competitive indeed. And the Mika have got to be a little bit careful. You can see that reflected in the cash that they have to spare. Chance of Steel Helmet can break through one of these rounds. It will put Namiga up down into the dumps. I mean, fight. And to take place. Khan is going to slink into the connector with his orb. Here he goes up with the smoke. Flames go forward, but 18 way I'm ready for it. Slight gaps that Khan hunts in. Looking for his moment to strike. And it's interesting, Namiko lent a third player over to be early. It was a, a deep lurk smoke thrown onto the B apartments, and it's kept their interest there. Still haven't, haven't made a manoeuvre based off that yet. And they're taking their time. But Khan's not been offset at all. There's been no pressure in towards mid, so he's just been able to walk over the top of this smoke, have a little look in, reset back towards Palace at his own leisure. And that was the bomb dropped on the cross, but that's still not going to deter Steel Helmet. As they go for this B split, the next point of contact is going to be Risky Bob in Ladder. They need to get past him to have success in the so round. know exactly what's going on. Two players on the bomb site. Risky Bob looking for this time. He's going to find it. That's the bomb dropped. It goes forward to him as well. Reclearing it, getting that bomb back. is going to be almost impossible. DD trying to make something happen. If he can find this kill in the Zanta, there's maybe a world that they can break back into B. But the flames forward. They can't get the bomb. Too many players are watching the angle. Another Molotov. The round is won. Maybe they can do some damage. That's the full objective. At this stage, Khan has to be careful. He is going to fall. So, oh, dude. Oh. Yeah, he is going to fall. 18 YM. I'm not going to whiff <laughs> another opportunity like that. But the round will go the way of Namigo. He thought about the knife. He did think about it. This is just really good from Namigo. As soon as they see the bomb in towards top middle, they, they rotate another player back towards B. And... This is obviously the same round, as you mentioned, where they had three players that had lent B early. So that always facilitates this ladder setup being a lot more effective. Because even if you get past the player in ladder, you still got to contend with that second player on B that you're probably not anticipating. AE with the AWP, the hero one as well, because everyone else is armed with pistols on the side of Steel Helmet. Khan can drop a, a molly, the first instant of contact instead. He'll just slip away, but this creates a lot of room and whilst the Amiga have found themselves a, a safe space in Palace, they've got to be wary about from within because DD is right behind them and he grabs an M4. That's scary for a moment. Leah alleviates it with the follow-up. Good HE forward. He's under pressure. Oh, the AWP, that was the moment. Least to recover M4 gets a kill and just like he has got into the backlines. Okay, knife for a second thought about it. Decides better just to get the kill. And two versus two with recovered M4s. The bomb needs to be picked up and they're a little worried about the presence of the CTs. That was thrown from Risky Bob, who's now moved around through B. They're still worried that he might be nearby. So they have to take their time as they pick it up. And that's given plenty of it for Risky Bob to make his way through to CT. We still have this player in ramp. HYM seems aware of it, but doesn't go for the hard clear and Flamis strikes for both. Yeah, well played from Flamis, but also a really good round out of Steel Helmet. They notice this is the first round in a while in which Namiga don't really put any threat in towards mid. So they can just scale. Can even hear the runaway in underpass with Khan retreating back towards connector. So they boost up there. They grab the element of surprise. And from there, they're able to get themselves to these tricky positions in which they catch Namiga on all these rotates. They're also aware that Flamis is the A player, but there's so many angles they need to try and clear out. And where they don't fully investigate in towards ramp, he's able to punish. 7-3, but the scoreline is a little bit elusive, to be honest. I feel like this game is a lot closer than it suggests. Double underpass, that flashbang is fantastic, but yet again, another trade. I'm not expecting the extra play there. Somewhat surprising. 
DD tries to catch the player a ticket, does good damage, but Flamis immediately responds. The aggression from the CTs is going to close off a Captain Mo. Are you ready? Oh, no, you're going to run away. And that's definitely been heard by Leah. With the space he's taken, Flamis can rotate. They know that B is under threat. Yeah, Xanta's already dropped a defensive smoke. Oh, just playing around it. Catches a glimpse of 18YM. And he sent back in. Anticipates there might be another player here. You've already got this Lurk locked in as well. Poor Namiga. Feels like the walls are closing in around Steel Helmet, so they need to fight themselves out, and they try it. AE does really good damage. Captain Mo versus the world. Trying to steer his team to victory. Might get the jump on Khan, but as he walks into the bomb site, Flamus appears from the window. Peekaboo to Captain Mo and Namiga got up to eight rounds. Good setup. It, it felt for a second that like maybe there was a, a world of DT had found that kill in ticket, but Xanter on the B defense getting that first kill gets a little lost in it, tries to make a play through the smoke. AE gives it a good shot. Again, if you found that double up, you can see a well where they can get the bomb down. They have plenty of util on Captain Mo for the post plant. Eighth and Amiga feels good. Nine, a possibility. And utility is lacking for the T side. Yeah, that's the big difference. No smokes, apart from the initial two that were thrown out off rip to get you into a bomb site. But they have found a, a safe haven in taking middle. Namiga's only contested it a couple of times through flashbang plays. So AE waits patiently, the molly in the window, hoping that someone was on the left-hand side of Steel Helmet. Cross back, AE would have been given an opportunity instead. That's not to be. Boost up. But it's considered. And Lear's also got this deep angle to hold for the short cross. Ooh, he does start uh -oh. to get curious. The flashbang. Goes over, but he doesn't go for the full swing. Just has a peek under Cat and sees nothing. It's actually very misleading information. Oh, the double Molotov. That's sick. The ladder's on fire. DD can't go anywhere. Couldn't escape. Couldn't go forward. AE tries to bail him out, but Leah is there. As an execution in the ladder room. Jasage is going to try his attempt in window. Risky Bob is covering it off. Bit of a half-hearted glance. One by one, they fall. Captain Mo tries to get it done, but it will be a 9-3 half for Namiga.就是感觉需要适应吧其实一开始会感觉非常的不好因为容错率太低了就是对于手枪局包括第一个长枪局对比整个比赛的结果走向影响太大了是这么感觉就是还有可能如果是 看都不足，但没准最大挑战其实还是我们自己吧，因为我们每个人都是第一次穿这么大的舞台，要克服的心理压力，我觉得还挺大的。
This game's got everything you want already. Knife attempts, just scrappy brawls taking shape. Steel Helmet getting up to shenanigans in towards mid, trying to backstab. But it's the Mega out on top. Nine rounds collected on their CD side and now it is up to Steel Helmet to pose a, a very strong defense to find their way back on their map pick. Is that what is that was this mouse pad have the line from Madagascar? Alex the line? I think it does. Yeah I think so. <laughs> what a bizarre mouse pad. <laughs> I, I, I might ask Hecri to find out like what it says. Like <laughs> that's bizarre. All right. Just around for Namiga. Great spread. Fast through the underpass. 18YM might be overwhelmed. Gush down low. Jumping is risky. Bob, pop, pop, and a kill. Right. Wrong way to do it. <laughs> and sure. that might be it. A got a single kill. Pecan is only going to allow it to be the one. Uh, how could you? <laughs> I can't he believe was How was he going to do it? To do that. <laughs> That's uh, that's kill max in. That's just that, that's the, that's the trickle down effect as well. AE finds one, and then immediately, just in the blink of an eye, everyone gets eradicated from Steel Helmet. Namiga are fighting everywhere. They're in mid. They're in A. They're out B. You turn around and you feel like one's over your shoulder. And that pistol really is a sentiment of how this game's gone so far. It feels like we're Destined for Namiga just to lock this one in. Only a Deagle here and there for Steel Helmet. A Zeus out for Yasage, which is pretty fun, but I don't think they'll be called into action anytime soon. 18 YM though, and DD are making this one interesting. The bombs dropped Ooh. on an island out towards jungle. Captain Moe's hit another. This has really got the potential of Steel Helmet winning this round. DD calls over support. Jalsage going to slip in Flamistress trying to provide some overwatch to allow that bomb to escape and be planted. No one in CT, so it will be allowed to go down and that dramatically increases the chances of Namiga closing this. Oh, Flamis with the drive-by tap. He's not done. Both in connector fall to his gun. AE has very quickly made his way through ramp. He's in the back lines, but I think he's been spotted. Round the edge, DD hits another and it's on to Xanta. In the back of the site, flustered. They're trying to overwhelm AE. There's no bullets left. It's the USP out and it's pistols for both the Haiti over the top. How is Xanta alive? He will fall to DD, but is there time? I think the 10 seconds might have passed. And for all the heroics of Steel Helmet on the pistols, it's not quite enough. That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. The fact that the Deagles are shining, the AKs have been recovered. There's been a really loud flank as well at ramp, and yeah, it enables these Deagles just to activate. And for all of their hard work, they get undone with a two on four. Flamus with sharp shots in connector. And even swap into a pistol right at the very end. This game is scrappy. The out of bullets in the rifles. The recovered one. I know. Oh my god. The USP. If he'd gone down there, that's the deep use. But he gets the critical kill. DD has no time. I think even if the HE had gotten the kill, it would have freed up an extra second. But somehow stays alive just long enough. But hey, hell of a round from Steel Helmet. Some great shots. A deagle shining. Yeah, you got to be happy with that. That was two deagles brought in for Steel Helmet. And, I mean, you killed everyone. It was expensive at the very least. Uh, the issue is the round count on the top of the screen. Uh, 11. Right next to Namiga's name. Drips and drabs of utility. It looks poised to be an A play, but this aggressive posture in towards ramp is really good for Steel Helmet. Crossfire enabled, maybe even a flash play for 18YM to poke his head around the corner. In fact, it's just going to be a little bit more contact. Risky Bob not revealing himself just yet and Khan finds the opener, but are you ready for Mr. Mo? Well, he's the only one remaining at this stage. Does get two kills, but that's all he's going to be allowed to find. 
felt like that Namiga all struck across the map simultaneously. There was the play out ramp, there was a play in connector, there was a play in palace. All of them came through at the same moment. And we saw actually from the POV of the player that was in connector, just how, yeah, there we go. <laughs> you can see the body of AE flying forward as Xander activates. That's the palace player getting that kill and giving him the distraction to strike. Yeah, that's the that's the credit as well to Namiga for like the activation point. As soon as Khan finds the opening on ramp, everyone swings at the same time and still Helmet just can't deal with the amount of angles they're being challenged from. This might all end with an A play. A blow on the smoke, a scout shot rings out for AE, but they don't see anything. Not entirely convinced that it could be the A attack, and for good reason. The Amiga are actually reconsidering things themselves. They move away from A, they leave a couple of players to lurk, hoping is Xanta that an MP9 gets aggressive and looks for intel, but that's not going to be the case. Instead, the Amiga, they'll bring the bomb over towards B, and this is the lesser reinforced bomb site. was interesting, wasn't it? They had so many players ready just to hit A, but then they just... Decided not to. It was a really quick scramble to reset. Although I think the finish is still going to be the same. Just a different approach. Mid control instead. The priority. Captain Mo blindsided. Aegis scout. Oh my god. He gets the collateral. An AWP would have been a double. But the scout just makes it two weakened players. But a chance for the MP9 to maybe come good. Jiggles for one, but can't find the kill again. So much damage inflicted, but not a fallen foe. Jasage finally fixes that with one of his own, but it leaves it to DD. A one on four. Barely a single player worth of health between all four of them. Without a kit, with time not on his side. And no chance. Flamis, a single shot through the dome, will secure the map of Mirage for Namiga. Yeah, one step away for Steel Helmet potentially being knocked out of the tournament. Namiga one step closer to continuing their run here in Chengdu.